Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Privacy Edition and the Tech, uh, what is it, Smart Tech Edition. I forgot what I put in there a second. So these are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time if you want to catch the show live. And let's get on into the privacy news. We're going to start by looking at link preview. So you send a link to somebody, you get this nice little preview. I mean, over here, we got Discord open up. And if I send you a link, it goes in and it fetches information, it shows the information and all this kind of stuff and even displays it and kind of downloads it onto your particular app. Like what if somebody sent some malicious stuff? It actually is going to be downloading malicious stuff to your app. How exciting. So this, uh, these guys here at, uh, is it MISC, Cam I don't know, whatever this, this group happens to be, uh, what they wanted to do is they looked at the privacy and security risks and implications of link previews. And they looked at a variety of different apps. They did um, a lot of different individual videos and they found that some of these things leaked IP addresses exposing links sent to end-to-end -to -end encrypted chats. So in other words, we are end-to-end -end encrypted, but if you have a link, it exposes the, the chat and the metadata of the chat via the sharing link feature. And so they looked at all of these different things. They looked at iOS and Android. So link previews. So, um, you know, here's one. Oh, so here's an example of a link preview in Signal. So in Signal, it shows you this information. Now, Signal is one that has a setting. You can turn it on or off. If you are using Signal for privacy and security, turn that off. So that if somebody sends you a link, it's exactly the link. You don't get, um, you know, the preview doesn't download. So there are uh, uh, their recommendations. Number one is the best thing is for a, uh, a chat application to not display a link preview. So don't generate it at all. Let the link be the link. And that way, if the person clicks on it, hey, any negative consequences are because of what they did. So um, the ones that do not do this, WeChat, TikTok, Threema and Signal if the link preview option is turned off. The second is the sender generates the preview. So in this approach, when you send the link, the app will go and download what's in the link. It'll create a summary preview, an image of the website, and then it will send that as an attachment along with link. So it's not actually actively downloading the stuff on the receiver's phone, it's downloading the stuff on the sender's phone. And then it's basically sending. That's how iMessage, Signal with it turned on, Viber and WhatsApp functions. Num uh, approach two is the receiver generates the preview. So somebody sends you a link and on your device, you don't have to interact with it. It just goes to the link, it goes out, it downloads information to your device. And they're like, yeah, don't do that because it does all sorts of goofy privacy type stuff. We are testing, did find two apps that follow the approach and they redacted them apparently. What if these are like, um, Let's see. Oh man, it's it's all it's all totally redacted. I was wondering if I could get in there and and unredact anything, but apparently not. Uh, approach three: uh, server generates the preview. So I'm not sure what these two are that are blacked out. It makes me wonder: um, is there some Gestapo tactics going? They gave us uh, so these are the ones that actually did the server. So the server goes ahead, does things, and feeds it out. Line, LinkedIn, Slack, Twitter, Zoom. Um, the, uh, the NSA, apparently, uh, Instagram, Google Hangouts, Facebook Messenger and Discord. And then they actually gave us a nice table down here at the bottom. And, uh, these links, all my links are of course in the post photo. Oh, look at this. What, what, what is this? Uh, um, um, a FOIA request. We got a FOIA request. They blocked out an entire thing there. It's, it's, I'm telling you, it's the NSA. It's the NSA. Uh, but anyway, this guy down here is a nice table which summarizes everything. Oh, they're not giving me a bigger, I thought they gave me a bigger link to this table. Um, but the table goes through Discord, Facebook Messenger, Google Hangouts, all these ones down here to the bottom, even down to the retracted, which looks like it's everything no across the board. No, no, no maybe not. Uh, but anyway, you can see which one is running, uh, which one could potentially run malicious code. Facebook Messenger, Instagram, and LinkedIn could all potentially run malicious code. They looked at leaking uh, encrypted links. They looked at IP exposure, uh, which line was that, but that was since fixed. And then you can kind of see whatever else is on there and then boring information, including R2, um, R, uh, that must be the NSA and the FBI because yeah, they're all redacted. 
So anyway, that was an interesting take, an interesting article looking at link previews and what the various apps do. And of course, the message is turn them off if you have the capability of turning them off. So the iPhone 12 launches and NHS over, this is over there in, uh, in the UK, uh, they are all concerned because when the iPhone 12 launches and they take all their data over, it didn't bring the settings of all of the, the creepy um, contact tracing apps. So they wanted to say, hey, make sure you turn every, all this stuff back on so we can perpetually track your location and log anything and everything you do with Bluetooth location tracking and all these other features. You know, all the things they promised us would never be happening, and it's come out that they're absolutely doing. Like, hey, if you want to participate in the standard contact tracing, go for it. But I'm just I'm just not about ready to have an app trace me all over the place, especially since you need to turn Bluetooth on and Bluetooth beacons for all sorts of crazy companies, people, crazy lunatics, and, and weekend hackers will be able to access everything on your device if you roam around with that enabled. So keep that in mind. So their recommendations is, is that when you get a new iPhone 12, users should select the notification listing, tap the exposure notification, turn on the allow notification options. Yes, you want to turn on all the notifications and all the Bluetooth and all the everything so you can be perpetually tracked. So uh, there you go. The iPhone 12 public service announcement. You can go ahead and turn all that on or you know, leave it off if you prefer, uh, whichever would apply to you. Uh, we talk a lot here about companies abusing their power. In fact, I am still in the middle of this embroiled work. I think last weekend on the news, I talked about Upchuck. Oh, excuse me, Upwork. That crazy company that's supposed to be good for freelancers and stuff. And I'll tell you what, they are insane. Like, they're getting more insane as I'm trying to delete everything off. They're like, send us your ID by this such and such a date. I'm like, uh, just delete the account. You're not getting my ID. We can't close your account because there's active stuff. I went through close everything out. You have an active balance. What balance? For what? So I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I just went ahead and, and uploaded my photo. So first I was going to take off my photo and just upload a black photo. I can't delete the photo. Okay, I can't just delete what's there. So it's going to upload a black photo. They wouldn't let a black photo upload. So I try to upload like a, um, uh, a gradient sphere. They're like, our facial recognition software determined that this is not an accurate photo. Um, thank you, creepy website. And so, um, you know, I, I went on to, uh, on to an online site generator and I downloaded an image and I, I put uploaded that image in, in place and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, uh, one of the things that I found is that uh, I got another email saying, hey, um, you know, you need to upload a new photo. There, there's something not right about this picture. I'm like, you know what? I, I don't care. It's a junk photo. Now I got to log back in, make sure they didn't revert back to like a real picture or something. But this is how creepy this company is. And all I've been telling them for a week is delete the account. I want nothing more to do with you. So I'm actually going to, if they don't get this thing resolved, you know, probably by like Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to, going to reach out actually to the government and say, would you go figure out what the hell these guys are doing? The problem is, is that companies can abuse things. And sometimes it's higher up. Sometimes it's middle level managers. Of course, we know that hackers paid AT&T employees a lot of money to let them into the backdoor systems. And this is an example of this type of reason. The reason why I'm not willing to give my government ID to a nebulous multi-global website or global national website, which has persons of unknown nationality and origin accessing all this information. I know I'd rather take out a couple more Google ads and promote my web design business here instead. Okay. And this is exactly why a surveillance company was found harassing female employees using its own facial recognition technology. So Jewel Labs, Equin uh, Equinox, Red Lobster are their clients. So they you sell these security cameras with built-in facial ID. What they were doing is they were putting these in places to spy on and collect photos of the females on their team. And then they were taking these photos and uploading them onto dirty little servers um, uh, where, which were they? Were they, uh, Slack, I forget, Slack channels, dirty little Slack channels and making sexual jokes about them. 
The, meanwhile, the company comes back and says, um, hey, you know, we intentionally hired a, a team of male athletes to have the energy of male athletes. So you hire a team of guys with the energy of male athletes and you wonder why they're abusing your software to stock women with facial recognition. Thank you, genius. Maybe we just had some good. But this is the clear reason why I am not willing to give that information to a company. Sorry. And you know, I offered with Upchuck there, I offered to say, we're going to go down to the local bank, have them verify everything and send a notarized document to you that they verified my ID. Nope, they wouldn't take it. They want nothing more than me uploading a copy of my ID to them. Nope, not happening. Now I'm just having a hard time getting rid of that account. Guys, stay away from Upwork. Just stay away from it. Stay away from it. It is a horrible place, and apparently it's full of a lot of scams, too. There's a lot of people making good, compelling arguments that they empower it. And on top of that, they're now taking like 20% of fees now. It's insane. Um, but anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. That's what I've been dealing with this week. Anonymous VPN users could be identified in movie companies' lawsuits. Well, the article here is mislabeled. What they're saying, they say anonymity has fallen. And no, that's not the case. What they're saying here is that this, you know, the, the company came out and said, hey, we want to anonymize these different people. And so they got a judge is, has allowed them to issue, uh, to issue uh, subpoenas for data. Well, it turns out one of these companies has private internet access. Who doesn't keep logs? Who has been demonstrated over and over in court to not have logs. So Torrent Freak gets these. They're like, oh, yeah, here's the IP addresses. The IP addresses go back to private internet access. Private internet access is like, man, I don't know who they are. <laughs> so uh, let's see. So here, Fallen Productions attorney has requested subpoenas to gain more information about the defendants from ISPs, email providers, and private internet access. PIA, however, does not keep logs, something that's been repeatedly confirmed in courts. But attorney Carrie Culpepper, who is representing Fallen Productions, is still requesting a subpoena. It is irrelevant because it shows they tried to hide their activities. It shows conscientiousness of illegal activities, he told Torrent Freak. So in other words, like, I mean, not necessarily, not be just because you're hiding your IP address. Maybe I'm hiding my IP address from the, the crazy company of, of um, athletic sexual male fiends that's trying to track down my identity. I mean, there's legitimate reasons to not de demonstrate my IP address. But regardless, private internet access... Um, this is from PIA said, private internet access has not received a subpoena in regards to the case, the VPN provider said. Even if we do, our response is always the same. PIA does not log user VPN activity. Sorry. So no, the article's not completely right when it says that, um, uh, when it says here that, uh, you know, an anonymity has fallen, anonymous VPN users could be identified. No, no, they're just going to get back down there and say, I don't know they are. Good luck Figure it out. Let me know if they, let me know if you find us, you know. But guys, this is why when a lot of people were jumping ship from private internet access, this is actually why I kept them. Because I looked into all these types of things. And yes, a company that was not necessarily good five years ago under completely different leadership did some shady things, but the current leadership does not have any any uh, signs of that. Uh, no signs of that at all. And so I'm just very happy to keep private internet access as an affiliate link. Uh, on top of that, they open source nearly everything that they're doing and, you know, and things like this are demonstrating that, yes, indeed, they're not keeping logs and they are protecting their users. And that's why I feel confident enough in supporting them. Walmart has a new store design. Now, this one could have been under business or under privacy. There is um, somebody sent a Zero Hedge article where they took portions of this and a few other ones out and... Um, and made the argument against the privacy factor. That's why I included it here. I just, I'm just not willing to use Zero Hedge as a reference for my news because Tyler Durden writes all the articles. I'm sorry, I no. Uh, you can't, if you can't stand behind your name and what you're publishing, eh, I'm probably not going to take you particularly seriously. Particularly if your supposed alleged name and photograph comes from Fight Club. I'm sorry. Be serious. Give me real data. Uh, but utilizing that article, I was able to track down this, which was an interesting, uh, an interesting place here. So 
What they're talking about is redesigning many of their stores, basically syncing all of the messaging and marketing in the stores, making it as uncomfortable to browse in and making it so it's basically, um, they want to uh, they want to go up and they want to um, make it so that you can get in and get out and even follow maps on your phone. So they really want to utilize the store location in conjunction with the app while they're tracing you all around the store. And that's really what their approach happens to be. And so they're kind of working on organizing their store a little bit differently and utilizing, so you can see these guys over here, you may not be able to see them next to the thing that says seafood. Well, what if you don't speak English and seafood and, you know, translate something else? Well, you have these pictures and the pictures all throughout the store are going to line up with what is on your, your uh, app. And so the idea is that they want you, whether you're at home shopping for what you need through the app or going into the store, everything is going to be based upon the app, including the maps when you get in are literally going to be pictures of the cell phone with the app. So they're kind of walking, uh, walking through all this. So here is kind of what it's going to look like. They're kind of almost making it look like an airport, aren't they? It's like all full of icons and nothing else. It's really creepy. So here's here's glorious pictures of the new photos here. You can see that they're all pictures of the app, including the app is going to have a map of the store. Tracking where you are, probably with Bluetooth and beacons. Tracking your location so you can literally track yourself through the map on the phone in live person. Wow, guys, we've gotten to a new low. Like, it's gotten so bad that we can't even go through a Walmart anymore without our phone giving us a map. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, there you go. There's your pickup locations. And, of course, all of this is collecting data, user data, and user data, and more user data. There you go. Walmart is getting exciting. All right, and on to our last story. Oculus, of course, we reported a couple of weeks ago that uh, Oculus will now require a Facebook account to use their service. Well, there's an update to this. Oculus owners, not only do they have to have a Facebook account, but if they ever delete their Facebook account, all of their purchases will be wiped off their Oculus device. So you will get the Facebook account and then you will keep the Facebook account for all eternity. <laughs> so Oculus users already fuming at Facebook chaining their VR headsets to their Facebook accounts, excuse me, uh, have been warned that they could lose all their Oculus purchases and account information in the future if they ever delete their profile on Facebook. We are so chained in now. Like, oh my God, ah, you know, it's like, at what point in time is society going to wake up and go, you know what? Maybe I just don't need this crap. At what point in time? Where is that line that you're going to draw and say, okay, no more. No more. Where is that line for you people? Have you figured it out in your head? Or are you just going to continue to be led on, done exactly what they want to do, like a sheep to the slaughter? <laughs> we don't want to do that, guys. We don't want to do that. Open up a little bit. Figure out where that line is. And when they're forcing you on a Facebook account to use a video game headset full of sensors and tracking data and logging that data into their account, this is way too far. This is the this is the government please break them up now approach. Okay, that's kind of where we are getting to. All right. So with, uh, that's our last article here in the privacy section. Of course, we did talk about VPNs and how private internet access does not actually store logs and they're told once again. So if you are in need of a VPN, have a look at our affiliate link, tlm.li forward slash PIA. You can get two years. Uh, so if you pay $70, you get two full years of access. You can do $50 for a full year of access, or you can do $11.95 a month. I believe now you can connect, is it six or 10 devices? Now I'm forgetting with all the VPNs that I work with. I think there might be up to 10 devices simultaneously and uh, works really well. This is the, this is the one uh, consumer grade one that I have actually purchased and used uh, quite a bit. So private internet access is an excellent one. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to the smart home news. 
And starting in with smart tech, Fitbit CEO reveals the company's plan to conquer fitness wearables and telemedicine. You know, using conquer when talking about subscribers in a Google owned company now, sounds a little dystopian. Um, cue the monthly reminder to go and watch the Selfish Ledger. Blah. Anyway, um, uh, yeah. So anyway, Fitbit Premium now has over 500,000 people who do not realize that they're now feeding Google's health algorithms. Uh, 13 years from the launch of its first wearable, Fitbit agreed to move under the Google umbrella to help the latter get a leg up in the fitness and wellness market. During recent interview, the co-founder and CEO, James Park, revealed the company's premium and health fitness services already surpassed 500,000 suckers user, uh, and, and talked about the challenges it faces moving forward. Of course, they talked in here a little bit about, oh, but, you know, what about Google data? Oh, they promised not to collect that data and use it anywhere else. <laughs> I, believe, I believe Google. I believe Google. You believe in Google? I believe Google. I believe Google all the way. So anyway, um, Fitbit, uh, made by Google and Fitbit. Ooh, look at that dystopianness. So there are the number of people using and getting these devices keeps going up and up and up and up and up. And so that's one of the things that uh, we have to keep in mind there. Um, these companies, anything that's collecting and storing your data on someone else's servers is already a huge risk to you. So be careful and uh, guys, don't participate in that. ByteDance, they have their first hardware product, $119. It's an educational lamp. They don't have a picture of this thing, but I'm I'm picturing, oh, they do. Okay, I, I did not see the picture the first time. It must have been blocked by the scripts on my phone. So you have this lamp here. So it's got this little dystopian uh, looking thing here. I'm, I'm hoping this is a light switch, not a camera, but it very well may be a camera. And... Um, here, basically, it has the screen over here, and in the picture of the worst parenting ever, the woman is turning her back on her child, checking his status on an app, rather than actually sitting down next to him and helping with the homework. So, the idea of this, and this is right now only sold in China. Huh. Lord help us, it's probably making its way over here. It'll probably have a different design. That's just not a, a American design, at least not yet. But... Um, the idea of this portal is so that the children can be doing their work and be constantly watched and uh, notified by, um, by their parents as they are engaging in whatever they are engaging. So this is just kind of crazy. It's called Go Go Kid. Kind of interesting. Um, so remember that Bite Dance is Bite Dance is an organization that collects stores, harvests, all sorts of data. They use this data, they feed it into a data analytics and AI firm in China. So literally now you are letting this data and analytics firm sit here and spy on your children where they're doing their work. So over here you can, oh, I guess you can get the answers to your homework. You can get watched and your parents can sit there and watch you on your smartphone. Oh, this is just the most glorious piece of smart tech I've ever seen. So there you go, guys. It's coming. Go, go, kids. Sign yourself up now. I'm telling you. All right, this one here is an interesting one. We have a, uh, is it Bang and Olfsen's latest lunchbox-shaped speaker has built-in wireless charging. So this itself, it's this thing actually lasts, I guess, um, uh, up to a, almost a day or so on battery on a low volume. If turned up to a high volume, of course it goes a lot, you know, burns through battery a lot quicker, but you can also set your phone on top of it and it will keep your phone charged off the internal battery while you are using the speaker itself. I'm not sure it's technically a smart speaker. Uh, it is mostly a Bluetooth speaker, but I thought it was interesting technology where you take the speaker, you set it down, you put your phone on top of it, sync it, and it can actually last quite a long time. And so this is a 3,200 milliamp battery, 37 hours of listening at low volumes, eight hours at typical levels, or four hours at max volume. Uh, you can see here it's got, um, uh, it's got the USB-C port for charging, 
and let's see, buttons atop the speaker handle for pairing. So on top of it, there's uh, some buttons to control your phone and your device, and you can set your phone up here. So it's actually kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting device. And hey, if it doesn't actually tie into anybody else's network, this is actually a fairly compelling thing. That's something definitely to uh, to look into. Uh, good feelings gone because oh geez. Drivers react to Tesla's fully self-driving beta release. Guys, remember this. They have taken Tesla's full self-driving beta release and opened it up on public roads all around the place. Now, people are told it's full self-driving, but you should still keep your hands on the wheel. Guys, we have people setting on autopilot and going to sleep. Do we really think they're actually going to come in here and... Um, monitor their Tesla when the full self-driving is enabled? No, we, now is the time. Any legislators listening, now is the time to figure out who is liable when the self-driving technology kills somebody, it's going to happen. And based on this little video here, and this has only been going on for less than a week, I think it's gonna be sooner rather than later. This Tesla here is like, hey, there's no one in this parking spot, let's go ahead and park there, yay. Um, this guy, it's crazy, it's scary, and it's unbelievably good, he says, right before the thing about crashes into him. Uh, there's some there's some videos over here. Let me turn down the audio. So here you go. This guy's driving along. He's kind of seeing, kind of seeing. All right, the car's like, whoa, and I think this is the one. Whoa, we had to stop. <laughs> so... Yeah, the car tries to accelerate, and uh, it's uh, not necessarily doing as good as you would hope it would do. Um, this guy here is making a left-hand turn, but wasn't turning sharply enough to avoid hitting cars. Oh, that's exciting. Let's watch this video. Uh, let's see. So we got this guy here. It's like, oh, let's go ahead and turn. Whoa, turn, 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 turn! <laughs> Oh, that's exciting. So yeah, there you go. This is uh, this is what's coming in. Uh, this guy, let's see, he said in a video posted Sunday, uh, the rivals have been more cautious. Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, so there's already a couple of uh, instances of of near misses here, and so that's <laughs> not cool. But of course, if this doesn't comfort you, then, oh yeah, cookies, yeah, go away. Um, if this doesn't comfort you enough, this is from, uh, is, it, is it Daimler? Daimler is a um, semi-truck manufacturer. They're partnering with Waymo to have fully self-driving semis. So there you have it. You just saw what happens with the Teslas, with their self-driving, how they like to run into things. Now they want to put this technology in semi-trucks too. So... So to all you truck drivers out there, you guys might be out of a job. But regardless, wowzers. Wowzers, wowzers, wowzers. So this is just their, their announcement that they are teaming up to deploy SAEL4 technology, the full self-driving Waymo stuff, into the semis to, you know, take away the truck driver's jobs. So there you have it, guys. There you have it. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie Duel, that old 70s, I think it was, was that one of the early, was that an early George Lucas film? It was either Lucas or Spielberg, I forget. And uh, they filmed it on almost no budget in like two days with like cam, handheld camcorders in many of the scenes. You know, the, the zombie truck not driven by anybody trying to run the guy off the road. Yeah, there we are. Now we have Duel coming to Waymo, so... Well, if you like the channel and you'd like to help support us, have a look at our subscribe star page. So uh, over here we have 1, 5, 10, 25 uh, um, tier levels here. You can jump on over, help support the channel over there. So with that, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on all these stories in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.